Excited again to um, share with you a presentation within our overall presentation. We've worked hard to think differently about the new year. And one of the needs that we had uh, is to be better organized. And that's actually one of the primary functions of the local evangelist. And that is uh, to help bring about order and organization. Well, I tapped and asked uh, Sister Lisa Norwood to help us develop a manual. And she's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I know, you know, these are the kinds of things I'm excited about. Uh, but she's really done a great job, and I can't wait for you to, uh, to all see it. Sister Lisa, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Take it away. All right. So thank you, Brother Emerson, for allowing me to participate in this project with um, the congregation. So I've developed a policies and procedures manual um, for our local congregation, and in putting this together, I researched um, policies and procedures manuals from churches of Christ across the country and um, kind of pulled from there to create what we have. So today I'm just going to introduce to you the, the purpose of it, what it entails, and then um, give you some next steps or what would be the next steps for us as a congregation. So first, the purpose of the Policies and Procedures Manual is to establish order in how church business is conducted. While we know that our, the Bible is our go-to for everything um, within the church, there also needs to be some order in terms of how we do business on a day-to-day -day basis. So we will use this manual to establish guidelines for church operations, anywhere from using the building for an event to how we hire um, our, uh, um, a minister or a secretary to who cleans the building. So establishing guidelines for every aspect of the church. And then the last purpose is to identify key roles and responsibilities within the congregation so that we know who the go-to people are for any particular area of the, of the church. So inside of this policies and procedures manual, um, it's, it's going to be very kind of lengthy, but I'm just showing you today the table of contents. And in that table of contents, you'll have our mission statement and our goals, our theme for the year, which Brother Emerson has already shared, which is back to the basics. There's an organizational chart that allows us to see who who's who's who and what is their role within the church. Um, and then there's a human resources piece. Typically, you don't think about human resources within the congregation, but there are definitely some human resource aspects. We have paid positions, and then we also have appointed positions. And it's important for members of the church to understand each of those roles and how people are placed in those roles. And then we have our huge area of ministries. Um, there's a list of several ministries, as you see on the screen. And inside of the manual, it goes into detail about each of the ministries, who's in charge of those ministries, and what it is that they do, and, and um, um, what they're about. And then there's some other um, pieces of our manual that we typically don't really talk about, but des definitely need some guidance on in terms of how do we do this and what are the steps. So we have our moral issues. Moral issues might be baby showers or wedding showers. What is the, what is the procedure for that? Then we have family matters. Um, Brother Emerson offers premarital counseling, new baby blessings. What are the procedures for that? Clinical pastoral education, um, facility use, as I've mentioned before, and then developing um, the congregation as a nonprofit entity. And then finally, transportation. So inside of our manual, there will be guidelines for each of these areas. And um, it will just help us to operate better as a congregation. So here's some important facts about the manual. It is a living document. 
That means it can be updated as needed. Once the, the church leaders have decided we need to do something different, the document will change. It is to be used for all church business, no matter what it is. If you have a question about it, you wanna know how do we go about doing something, your answers will be in that manual. And as church leaders, they will use that manual to make all of our necessary decisions. The manual will be accessible to all members. There will be soft copies and hard copies. For those of you not familiar with that language, you'll be able to access it electronically or you will receive a paper copy if that's what you desire. The goal is to have the manual distributed to all members by March 1st of this year. Um, that gives me time to finalize some, um, some of the pieces, but also time to print um, the manual itself, so that if you desire to have a paper copy, you will have that. So that is the end of my presentation about the manual. I will take any questions, um, and you're welcome to type those inside of the chat box. Brother Emerson, back to you. Well, I told you, Sister Norwood has some amazing skill. We're so blessed to have her. Thank you so much uh, for your work. Uh, I've, I've looked at the document, we worked on the document together and I'm so thrilled uh, and so pleased. A couple of quick things. Number one, uh, for a hundred member congregation, it is a little lengthy. So we will probably narrow it some, but I love the beginning and I love the way that our dear sister has kind of thought through the process. So as soon as we can, uh, we'll let you see it. You'll have access to it. Uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. All right, Sister Norwood, thank you so much for all that you do. Have a wonderful day. and We'll check with you later. Thank you.